before we get started on today's video, I would like to say thank you to all my patrons. I wouldn't be able to keep the channel live and keep making these videos if it wasn't for you guys. So your support means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. So now that the UI is finished, we can start adding the quests. And to do that, we will have to add some scripts. So first of all, just to keep track of all our scripts, we are starting to have a lot of scripts. So um, let's just keep getting them in order by creating these folders. So let's make a new folder called quest. So this quest folder is going to contain all the f uh, scripts that have something to do with the questing. And we need to create four scripts for now. So let's just create them already. Let's create a quest script. And let's create a, let's see if my computer works, yeah, a quest giver. So the quest giver is going to be attached to the quest giver in the game world. Then we have the quest, which is the quest itself, itself with um, all whatever, like um, objectives and stuff. And then we are going to create a new quest log script. This will contain all the quests that the, um, the player is, um, what is called, is on right now. So all the quests that he's trying to complete is inside the quest log. And then we need a quest script. So the difference between these two is that this is something that is in the mono behavior, and this one is something that is a mono behavior that is attached to a game object in the world. So that will be one of these test quests here, or all of them actually. So let's create the prefab first of all. Uh, if you open up the canvas and find the quest log, you can see we have uh, underneath the quest list, we have the quest area. Wow, it's so far in. We have all these quests delete all of them except one, like so. And then take this quest and add a component called quest script. Just add the quest script to it. And then you take this one and you actually make a prefab of it. So just drag it into the prefab folder for now. So it's just out here. We don't have like lots of folders for our prefabs at the moment. So bear with me, let's just keep it like this. For now, that is. So that's the quest. So this is the one that will be instantiated when we create a quest. So we can just delete it from the scene. And let's get back to our quest script. Um, which one should we do first? We can do the quest giver first. So let's try to open up the quest giver. It's very, very simple for now. It, there will be more things to it. Um, but for now, it's, it's there's not a lot of things in it. So first of all, it needs an array of all the quests that its quest giver has. So whenever we create a quest giver in our game world, we simply just select the quest giver and add quests to him so that he has a list or an array of all the quests that he can um, provide to the player. Let's make a private quest array. Remember, that's why I created all the scripts first so that we can do this and call this one quests and serialize it. And what else? We're going to have a reference to the quest log. So this is for debugging only, because right now I just want to be able to start the game and see the quests go into the quest log uh, instantly without me having to go to a quest giver, click on him, click on the quest, accept it and everything. That's further down the road. But for now, for testing, we're simply just going to make a uh, reference to our quest log here. To the quest, what quest log. Mm, and call it temp or something. And we also want to serialize this. Okay, so we have these two. And then in awake. So we are assuming that we are adding a quest to this uh, array here. So we can try to. Actually, we don't have the functionality for it yet. But here we need to accept. A quest because we need to accept the quest when we start the game on awake so that we just take the quest and pump it right into the quest log right away okay. so that's the quest giver we can already take that and add it to the game world somewhere let's see we have a vendor right there well let's just duplicate him and take the duplicate and move it I don't know up here somewhere Our quest giver uh, rename him to quest giver and remove the vendor script from him. And that's it. Just keep it like that. Okay, so the goal of this video is to be able to click the play button. And then 
a quest should appear with a title right here inside this field. That's the goal of this video. So that's what we want to do. To do that, we need to open up the quests. So first of all, we will have to make sure that the quest has a title. So let's make a private string called title. And we need to serialize it so that we can set it from the, um, what is it called, the um, inspector. So that's the title. Um, we also need a description, but let's wait with that. And what else? We need to be able to access this title. So I'm going to make a property for it and rename this one to my title. So the thing is, we need to be able to sit the, create the quests, right? Um, we are going to create objectives and everything later. Um, but for now, the point was to just show one quest in the in in this inspector here or in that window. So what we have to do is to be able to select the quest giver, and of course give him the quest giver script. And then we should be able to create um, quests here, right here on the quest giver. So we can say, oh, you need a quest where you need to collect five apples and kill four skeletons, for example. That's what we want to be able to do. Um, right now we can't do that. And that's because the quest here is not serialized. It's serializable. Um, because if we look here, we have a serialized field of type quest. But this one is not serializable. And, of course, it does need to be a mono behavior as well. So we just remove that. And on top here we say serializable. Uh, we need to write system dot serializable there. So for now, ah, let's just leave these because we need them later. Um, so now it's serialized, and if I save and I don't have any errors, see here it should pop up here. I need to click on Unity. Oh, and I added the wrong script. It's a quest script. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's take the quest giver again and put him here. There we go. So we have the temp block, which we will come back to in a second. We have the quests here. And let's say we create one quest. And what quest is that? It's called um, temp uh, test quest, right? That's the quest we want to be able to see. So if everything works when we're done, we press the play button and it will be written test quest right here inside this area so the quest log here remember it's only for debugging so we need to open the canvas find the quest log and then take the quest log script and put it right there and remember it should be the quest log script not something else like it before so now we have that we can select our quest giver again and take the quest log and drag it onto there so now the quest giver has a direct connection to the quest log it's not what we're going to do later but for debugging it's fine Okay, with that done, we should be able to add the quest to the quest log somehow. So this is done inside the quest log script. And let's see if we can find the quest log. Quest, quest, log there. And we need to create a new function. Let's make one called accept quest. So you might already be able to imagine what this one is going to do, right? It's going to accept the quest. So this is what is going to be... Um, executed when uh, a player goes up to the quest giver it opens it clicks on the quest giver and sees the list of quests that this quest giver has available then you select one of the quests and then click accept quest and then this function here is going to run so we will build on to this as we go along but uh, we need to start somewhere and the first thing we need to do is just to add a quest to the quest log so let's make a game object and we need to instantiate it somehow And what do we need to instantiate? We need to instantiate the quest prefab. Remember just a few moments ago, we created that quest prefab right there. And we need to instantiate that one in here. So let's make a um, game object and just call it uh, quest prefab. This is our prefab we're going to instantiate in our game world, right? Okay. So let's tell the instantiate function that we need to instantiate our quest prefab. And I would also like a parent, right? Remember that we instantiated something before under the quest area. Remember, it needs to go right there to be able to be shown over here. Okay. So we also need a reference to the quest area. So let's jump back in here and make a private transform uh, reference. And let's call it quest list. This is the... Um, yeah, that's the list of all the quests. 
um, so serialize that field. Um, what, let's call it quest parent. I think that's that's a better word. So quest parent. So what's the parent going to be? Quest parent. Okay. And of course, when we have instantiated this, we will need to change the name and everything, and that's why we are actually um, what is it called using this game object, <laughs> not game manager. Um, that's why we're creating this geo here as game object. Because then when we have done that, we say, um, let's actually just say this and check if it works. And then we can write the rest. And where do we do that? Well, remember a few moments ago, we went to the quest giver and we went down here and wrote some code and we write debugging only. It's not temp, um, like, it's not something I should say. Temp lock dot accept quest. Okay. So let's see what happens when we run this, if we get null references, if we get the test quest out there. So we got a null reference. And why is that? Well, our quest giver, or oh, not the quest giver, sorry, quest, quest lock, doesn't have a quest prefab and a quest parent. So move the quest prefab up there and take the quest area and drag it to the quest parent. Let's try again. And now we have test quest. Okay, so that's the first part. We have test quest, but that's not what we want to write. We want to write the actual name of the quest. Right now it is quest, test quest, but let's write something else. Let's write um, a debugging quest or whatever. That's the quest name. And as you can see, it doesn't show debugging quest. Funny enough, because we haven't made sure that it takes the name of the quest that the quest giver has. Okay, so we need to go back here into the quest log and change it around so that the quest log takes the name of the actual quest and puts it on the game object. So for, for that to happen, we need to make sure that it takes in a quest right there. So the accept quest asks the quest giver what quest am I accepting? The quest giver gives the exact quest that the player is accepting into this function. And then we know what we need to accept and set the description and all those things. So we can say go, not, not gizmo, go dot get component text. And we can see we need to use in the engine dot ui there dot text is equal to quest dot my title. Remember we created the quest, we set a title on it, and that title is exactly the one that we are writing right here under debugging quest, called debugging quest. So with this is done, it will complain and say, hey, well, you're not giving in the corresponding arguments here. Well, I assume this is a very bad practice for final code, but this is us for testing. I assume that there is a quest in my quest log on position zero. So I say quest zero. So I just hand that in. Okay. So we would get a null reference if we didn't have a quest on the quest giver because quest zero is that one here on index uh, zero here, this one. If I would do like this, there would be two quests and we can make debugging quest and testing something. Okay. So it will only put in debugging quest right now. As you can see right there, we have debugging quest in the quest log. And if I would go back and make sure, okay, we need to take both one and, and uh, zero and one, for example, just to test. Well, then we will have two quests, one called debugging quest and testing something, as you can see. Now we have two quests in our quest log. So that's the first step in this process. As you can see, there's lots of things we need to do, but now we can actually take a quest take the title of the quest and put it into our quest log. So that's what I want to do in this video. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if um, you find any bugs along the way, this is a kind of start of the quest log. So there is, of course, some bugs. Um, but if you find something along the way, don't hesitate to let me know in email or in the comment section below. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.